Welcome back. Uh, more with Louis uh, Pichet, who's a uh, personal security expert. Uh, Louis, why don't you tell us about what steps a woman can take going through that danger danger zone, a parking garage, parking lot? Okay, getting back to the getting back to the parking lots. Eighty percent of personal attacks, whether it's assaults, purse snatchings, or rapes, take place in that parking lot. We realize those are danger zones. To get the danger out of the danger zone. We'll get, these, we'll get the women to follow a few simple techniques they can use each and every time that they're going to enter the parking lot. First thing they want to do, credit cards and money away before they enter that parking lot. Second thing, keys in their hand before they enter the parking lot. As they get up to the parking lot, survey that parking lot for safety. Look to the left, look to the right. If it feels safe, proceed to your vehicle. If it does not have security, or somebody who's working at the restaurant walk you to your vehicle. As you approach your vehicle, look under the vehicle for shadows. When you get up to your vehicle, look in the back seat. Make sure that no one is accompanying you. These are things that women have heard, but they don't do all the time. And if somebody tries to grab their purse, God forbid if they try to grab their purse, we tell women, let them have it. Not by beating them over the head with it. I know that's what they want to do, but by letting that purse go. Every year across America, over 100 women will give their lives for the contents of their purse. We had a woman right here in Newport, Ritchie, coming out of TJ Maxx with her daughter, Linda Romo, daughter Jennifer, walking out of the parking lot. Man came up, grabbed her purse. She tried to fight for that purse. She hit her head on the parking lot and eventually died in the hospital a few days later. Now, what's in your purse that's worth that? Let Let's go, go over and... Why do you say your key's in your hand? To get to your vehicle. We don't talk about keys in the hands for fighting. Now, what we like to tell women is, take the essentials, the things you have to have in your purse. Those things are your credit cards, your ID cards, your license, large bills, keys to the home and vehicle. If your keys are in your hand, the rest of those items are going to fit into a smaller pocket purse or pocket wallet. Get into the habit of taking that pocket purse and putting it into your pocketbook. Now when you exit the vehicle, the mall, take it out of your purse and put it into your pocket. Now, we're not telling ladies not to carry their purse. My mom raised me smarter than that. But what's in your purse now that you can't let go of? Their lipstick, makeup, hairbrush, all the things their husbands or boyfriends forget that they remember for them. Now, if that criminal were to come by and grab that purse, they can just let that purse go, wave to them and say, I hope you enjoy that lipstick. I hope it's your color because they're not getting anything. What about uh, like weapons or mace or anything like that? Do you recommend anything? Yes, we do. Absolutely. We tell women, if you want to protect yourself, we want you to protect yourself with the same thing that every law enforcement officer and deputy in the United States carry and recommend. And that's not the gun. But next to that lethal weapon on their weapons belt is a non-lethal weapon called police strength pepper spray. Now, police strength pepper spray is not mace. They actually stopped using mace over 16 years ago oh. when they found out that mace was ineffective on criminals high on drugs, alcohol, or psychotic. Sounds like 95% of the people doing the crime. Right. So they work with police strength pepper spray, and a one-second burst of this police strength pepper spray will stop an attacker up to 45 minutes to an hour, all with a one-second burst. But you're not going to carry that through a parking lot. That's kind of bulky right there. Right. So for ladies, what we recommend is the keychain model. The keychain model, where this ballistic spray will go up to 16 feet, this model will go eight to 12 feet, even when the wind's blowing at them. This is a jet spray that comes out, a ballistic spray. Nitrogen is what pushes the, the contents out. And this is like the wasp spray that goes up the two stories in the larger one. That's how this one goes. Now, is that strong enough to really keep somebody at bay? Absolutely. This is where you don't want to go to Walmart, Kmart, Target, Circle K, or God forbid the flea markets to get your pepper spray. Okay. You want to go to police supply stores or gun shops that work directly with the department. So how much would an item like that cost, that police-grade keychain pepper spray? When you're going to the police supply stores, they are a little bit more. Now, our company offers these. We have these at the wholesale price of $15, only $15. The large one, this has a leather case that comes with it. We have this for $25, the set for $40. 
Now, I know you go around and you give talks and seminars to groups. Let's say I, I belong to a club, a, a women's club or a golf club or a homeowner association. I want to have you come out and give a presentation and give a talk. Do you, do you charge me for that, and how can I get a hold of you? Our programs are absolutely free of charge, and we come to the organization. If it's a homeowners association meeting, we're going to come there. If it's an American Business Women's Association meeting, we're going to go there. We go to churches, hospitals. We are all over the state of Florida. Our groups, were, we'll do groups all over the state of Florida. 10 people up to 10,000 people. So anywhere a group is, a meeting is, get in touch with us and, and we'll, have, them. we'll have a crime prevention practitioner come out and talk to them. Give them a, an in intensive crime prevention program. Wow. Lewis, that's great, and uh, I can't think of anything more topical right now in Sarasota County, and, and we're trying to get more publicity about this, uh, this guy who's out there now and hopefully you know, get some information in the hands of women so they can protect themselves. So thanks for coming on the show. Thank you very much. All I appreciate right. it. Thank you. Now it's time for our Weasel of the Week. Our Weasel of the Week is uh, Tony Gonzalez. He is, he is the president of the Amalgamated Transit Union, Union, Local 1701. He's the president of the SCAT Bus Drivers Union. And uh, we, we were a little bit dismayed to see him on the 30th anniversary of the SCAT bus have his drivers picket and protest the county because the, the county is seeking to, to freeze their wages and not give them a pay increase. This is absolutely not the time for any government city, county employee to be trying to get pay raises when so many people in the private sector are hurting. Uh, this guy obviously has a tin air politically, um, county, com uh, a county commission, uh, county manager uh, Jim Lay is absolutely dead on right when he says this is not the right time, it is a, it's a bad idea for them to be picketing and protesting for pay raises and not one scat bus driver has been laid off yet and they ought to consider themselves very lucky to have a job and for that reason Tony Gonzalez who's overreaching a little bit here in this particular economic climate is our weasel of the week we'll see you next week on clot 941 you ready let's go